So here we have this little church trying to reach out to the Latino community. By the way, they're reaching out only to the bilinguals because ideally they would have put subtitles in Spanish, in Spanish, so that um, the Spanish preference people would understand that, but great effort. Um, and so that's what we want to do. Best Buy wants to do the same thing as that little church uh, in uh, Ritual, Minnesota wants to do. We want to connect with the Latinos around our corporate center. We want to connect with the Latinos here in New York and in the Carolinas. We were talking with some folks of uh, how surprising it is when people say, oh, Carolinas, really, Latinos, yes. Um, and so that's, I, that's what I want to talk about today. And I was asked to talk about three different things, roughly. Um, our segmentation, or a little bit about how we look at our segments, and uh, also joking that we use our own nomenclature for segments, and I said that that's an old strategy I use so that I can fleece people and you guys think I really know what I'm talking about. But um, Also, going to talk a little bit about the media vehicles that we use, and then a little bit about how we mine our database. Um, good morning, everybody, and I'm glad that the room's filling up. Um, I am going to try and get through this quickly because I know we started a little bit late and we want to catch up on time. And before I start, I want to show just one video. What I'm going to be talking about today is really um, connecting, you know, the, the whole theme today was connecting national brands to local audiences. And I'm going to talk about how we connect HP, which is a global brand, to local Hispanic audiences and be pretty quick in, in the brand and then what we've done that has been very successful. So I'll start with the video and then we'll get into more detail. Uh, there is actually three things that really define what media should be in the, uh, in the budget of a consumer, in the pocket of, of, the, uh, of the advertiser. And the, the three things that I finally defined were the media that we buy or the media that we want to include in our plans has to be an integral part of the consumer's life. You want media that the consumer wants, as opposed to media that, you know, like somebody throws at him or at her. So that's the one. And I think it transcends engagement at some point. It really becomes part of the fabric of your life. My wife is a good example. We have a TV set in the kitchen, which I hate, only because she cannot live with CNN in the morning. And we have five TV sets. By the way, all of them from Best. And I have my group card here with me. And uh, the last one was a 55-inch, really cool set. So. We have five TV sets for three people in my house, but my wife cannot live without CNN in the morning, so that's one, it's engaging. The second part is, does it really move my needle? And my needle be, can change. When I worked with Colgate, the needle was you know, like 200 million tubes of toothpaste a year. So you need media that reaches enough people to move 200 million tubes of toothpaste. When I worked with Embraer, if we could solve one jet, we'd be happy campers. A jet is seven million bucks. So you know, the media that would reach five people who could buy a jet, was really good for us, only five people. And then the third one is, can I be efficient about it? Can I reach these people? Okay, the Macy's Hispanic customer continues to grow and is currently 17% of our sales, which is huge. And we're predicting it to be over 20% in, in the next 10 years. So what is Macy's doing today for Hispanic marketing? Well, we're doing a lot with it in language marketing. Still to us, TV is still king, we love TV. And you'll see a lot of our, um, our general market advertising for one day sale, birthday sales, so on and so forth. Anything that general market gets for television, Hispanic is also getting that as well. So we're, we're matching campaign for campaign, which is big. Same thing with radio. Whatever we're running in general market radio, we're also going to run it in language on the Spanish radio stations through by network. Magazines. We're, we're in a bunch of magazines. I'm hoping you're seeing all of our ads, whether it's in Vanidadi, whether it's in Latina, people in Espanol, Sam for Mujer, Spanish business, Latina style. And we're staying with the same cadence because we don't think it has to be a totally different approach. For instance, if we're all about skirts, then that's what we're going to talk about. Of course, our models are going to be different. We might The fashion might change slightly, but it's still about skirts. And, and that's the whole direction of the company to push that. Um, we have newspapers, we do Hispanic newspapers, roughly about 70 Hispanic newspapers around the country. It runs all over our store-wide sales, again, the one-day sales, the birthday sales. And since all of our ads, um, especially in the ROP, are so diverse, and you know all of our ads are all gridded up, you know, 20% off this and 30% off that, so much diversity within those ads that we're able to run it in both our African-American and our Hispanic newspapers as well as it running in the general market. We are at a point 
where no business can grow without these consumers, with this marketplace. And so we need to make it a bigger conversation. It needs to be much more than just marketing. Because if you're going to look for growth over the next 10 years in an economy where you can actually have stagnant unemployment at north of 10%, structural you know, economics that are going to really make businesses think about how do you find growth? <laughs> Teresa also serves on the Volkswagen of America Diversity Committee. As media manager, in her second job, she collaborates closely with Mediacom in New York on both general market and Hispanic media strategy. On a personal level, Teresa has an interest in Hispanic culture, and she and her family have a second home in the Dominican Republic. So welcome, Teresa. And to Teresa's right <clears throat> is Tanya Cameron. Tanya is the Senior Manager of Customer Relationship Marketing for the Hispanic segment at Kraft Foods. Tanya was born and raised in Mexico City, and she received her undergraduate degree in business at ITAM and her master's degree at London Business School. And finally, community familia CRM program is a huge competitive advantage that cannot or would be very difficult to replicate overnight. During the past couple of years, Comedia Familia has become an integrated 360-degree platform that now includes innovative channels such as mobile, Facebook, or YouTube. We want to offer Latin moms different ways in which she can reach us. And well, but look at Latin America. Uh, really, you see Brazil. Uh, you don't see anything on Argentina, Chile, Venezuela, Central America, even Mexico in this month was, was just not there. And so people in the United States really need to go outside of the, the, the media that's here in the United States to get quality content um, about their, their home countries or, or world media here. And the winner is... La Prensa Riverside. And the winner is General Mills, Enrique Vida, Media H. And the winner is Casey. The winner is Toto Bebe. President of Hearst Newspapers. In many ways, uh, Stephen Swartz epitomizes uh, what this conference uh, is all about. And, and again, thank you very much, Stephen, for coming. Um, you know, connecting uh, local audiences through digital and print media is uh, something we understand. Hearst Newspapers. Um, you know, it's her newspaper special thing. This is an interesting phenomenon because if you rem recall the slide I showed you earlier, you see a, a large percentage of Hispanics born in the U.S. There's a couple of things that are occurring um, that we've seen in our data. As uh, Paul had mentioned, I was um, working, I've been working with the MEC Bravo to create a Nuevo American segmentation, which is takes away from the, the ingredients of acculturation and really brings um, segmentation, in, it, it segments the Hispanic market by drivers and consumer drivers. And what we noticed when we initially did the segmentation, there was a group of Hispanics that had no relevant involvement with Spanish language at all. They were Hispanics because of descendancy, because they, they're five generations and their last name is Gonzalez. As that in September of 2010, Univision actually beat out the top four, uh, the big four networks against persons 18 to 49 and 18 to 34 in prime time. So, Danielle, as more parents think of 2011 and, and to the future, what do you feel are the key challenges that uh, marketers face when they have to approach their CMOs to, to gain incremental budgets for their Hispanic or multicultural efforts? Well, I think it's a matter of making sure that the information is digestible so that anybody can understand what the size of this market represents. 
And it's always important to prove the return on the investment. Uh, marketing to Hispanic consumers is cannot be considered something that's nice to have. You have to have pure, hard, um, fast, factual numbers that have to be included in everything. And uh, you know these charts that show population, everything like that. But it's also important to be able to show any point of sale data, anything you can that relates what your efforts are doing to help propel growth of Hispanic consumers, and in addition, draw, driving overall growth for the brand. So it's not just this nice little have the percentages, but how are you proving it that it's working for the entire overall health of the brand? Coupon redemption. Yes. General market versus Hispanic. Yes. For your brands, does it work? You know I can't talk about it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yes or no? Uh, so that's a loaded question. <laughs> and the reason why I say that is because um, at the end of the day, we have different measurements, right, as to how we get these folks. Uh, we have what you call uh, the CPGA, which is come to us versus, you know, uh, Walgreens and now Walmart, Target, so it's becoming more and more difficult. And so we have to do a better job from a messaging standpoint to be very relevant culturally, but also from our... 